Hey, Margie here. Before I even talk about this episode, I want to tell you about something so exciting that's happening at the same time that this podcast is being released. And it's my new summit, More Natural Approaches to Osteoporosis and Bone Health 2.0, where I have over 54 new talks, fabulous experts, demonstrations on exercise, on cooking, and so many new tools you'll be able to learn and put into your life that can really make a difference for your bones and overall health. So my recommendation if, is if you have a limited amount of time to stop, not watch this episode, because it's going to be here. You can watch that afterwards and go over to the summit. And the link is in the show notes, but you can also go to tinyurl.com slash summit. So it's just T-I-N-Y-U-R-L dot com slash S-T-R-O-N-G B-O-N-E-S S-U-M-M-I-T. So highly recommend doing that first. Well, let's talk about today's episode. So today I wanted to discuss a mindset shift because so many people I've been hearing are just so upset because they get this diagnosis of osteoporosis and they really... It's just scary and conjures up all sorts of horrible images. But the truth is, what I want to talk about today is that this can be an opportunity, an opportunity to kickstart your health and where you can make so many positive changes. So I'm going to, I'm going to have help me with this discussion and actually interview me once again is my husband, Dr. Craig Bissinger, and he's an OBGYN and he's in private practice in New Jersey. And he has a really good perspective in terms of looking at this issue as well. So stay tuned. Welcome, Craig. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's always a pleasure. So I think this is an important topic and I'm gonna turn it over to you just to really interview me, but I also want you to contribute because you have a lot to share when it comes to osteoporosis and working with women for so many years as an OBGYN. So I'm going to pass the mic to you, and then we're just going to talk about this important topic. Well, thank you, and thank you all for joining us today. Um, you know, it's interesting. March and I have been at this conversation for many, many years from a lot of different perspectives, and certainly the doctor and the holistic approach. Uh, together, we try to find ways to kind of blend and merge what we do. Um, and interestingly, I always wonder why Margie said, you know, uh, osteoporosis, the diagnosis is really a blessing in disguise. And I come to understand a little bit better, but I thought she should at least share with you a little bit what she means by that. You know, I have always believed that your biggest challenges are your biggest opportunities for growth. And that also happens with osteoporosis because you get a diagnosis and it's so scary because it's silent. So you almost have no warnings. And all of a sudden you are told, you go and, and you all, you know, you're told that you have osteoporosis and that just conjures up so many horrible images. It conjures up images of being weak, frail, falling, and taking away this, this precious life of yours, this active life that you see happening. You may have grandchildren, you're seeing enjoying them, enjoying taking trips. You may be retiring, wanting to travel more. And all of a sudden you see, that's it. This is all gone with this diagnosis and you're going to be frail and debilitated. Well, it scares you. I mean, the good part about that is that people are scared. Not that that's a good thing. Fear is horrible, but they take action. And then the action that they can take is so powerful and so life-changing. So that's what I mean. We can go more into what the action is, but that's, that's what I mean. We go from fear to empowerment and then all the amazing things that people do in the process that are good for your bones are good for your whole body. So I think truly we haven't, this has never been, this has never been looked at, but I think people will live longer because they're taking care of themselves in so many ways. I think they'll be much happier if they're doing my program at least now. But I think all these programs programs incorporate stress reduction because that's such a big key component. But underlying root causes that also get addressed that you may not even realize you don't have to live with, you know, like constipation and other things. So I could go on for two hours, but that's in a nutshell, that's the answer. 
Um, I really agree with Margie on that account. Um, one of the things I always tr that really troubles me is our lack of early diagnosis of osteoporosis and even some of the precursors in the osteopenia categories. You know, we're trained to look for risk factors that some people may have, but that may be not be enough. You know, when you reach menopause, especially, which is one of my fortes, um, you start losing bone at a rapid rate. And we're not instructed to start testing you really till you turn 65. And there's a lot you could have done or can do in those earlier years to slow it down or even hold it stagnant. Um, and I think that's a lost opportunity. What do you think about that, Margie? Yes, I think a couple of things. I think the mentality of this country or just in general of medicine is that you don't, it's not that you try to prevent, you fix something once there's a problem. And so I think that there's a disconnect there because it's so much easier. It's, it's way better to start at an early age and do the right practices at any age so that you prevent the bone loss versus waiting till you have the bone loss. It's all possible and it's all doable and it's never too early and never too late is what I say. But if we, if we can look at it, like, you know, for example, with your heart, when you see the doctor, they're doing all sorts of things to prevent heart disease. You know, you're finding out, is your cholesterol too high? Is your blood pressure? There's so many things. But yet we don't really do that with osteoporosis at all. You know, is the doctor asking you, tell me, what's your current level of exercise? You know, how's your diet? It's just not done. So I think that, first of all, I'm very big into prevention at any age. You don't have to wait till the diagnosis. But the diagnosis does seem, because I think of to propel people to figuring out, oh, what should I do? Because they didn't really know they have a problem. And it would be nice if the doctor all along, as you're going through, you know, as you're going through your, your appointments, asking you about risk factors for osteoporosis. And sometimes they do, and those people will get a, a DEXA scan earlier and get bone density testing. Because if you have a risk factor, it is recommended then that you get earlier testing. But the point being, I think that's a real problem and you want to you want to deal with this as soon as possible and I think everybody everybody kids should be learning about this and just be doing things throughout their life so it doesn't have to be an issue even if you lose some in menopause you're dealing with this and also back to menopause though I think the issues with bioidentical hormones for so many years scared people when this is an opportunity that people have to really prevent osteoporosis and I think you know, now that's just, that's changing, but still it's not used by that many, you know, it's not in the mainstream, I don't think quite yet. Uh, Margie puts out a really interesting point and, and there's two points to this I kind of like to address. One is about bioidenticals and estrogens, but I wanted to start by mentioning that when my patients come back with a diagnosis, both basically by bone density testing of osteoporosis, they are frantic. And they're looking for guidance and they want it fast and they want it to be easy. And that's just not the reality. Um, if you're the doctor on this, you know, you sit there and you say, well, get some food with calcium in it. And the patients say, well, what food has calcium? And they'll say, well, just look on the side of the labels. That will help you figure it out. And then what about exercise? And I go, weight bearing exercise. You know, I don't know. Well, don't. you know, you have. I know, but I know that I'm about one of the few people because I've been living with this for, <laughs> and sleeping with this, uh, you know, in bed and sleeping kind of thing with my wife for many, many years on these topics. And I know all about them, but my colleagues and, and friends are not ready to give you that kind of information. And even digging yeah. into some of the other causes, because we order a, a litany of blood tests. And if the tests are all normal, we go, well, it's just get, getting old, I guess, or family history. So there's a lot that we don't know. And there's a lot that I'm grateful for having learned from Margie that allows me to give people better opportunities. So there you go. Tell them about what you think some of those opportunities might be. Yes, I think that I, I think I think it is a problem. And I don't think I don't blame the doctors because I know their training. That's the thing. They have almost no training in nutrition. So it's not something that is so important. They have almost no training in that. So it's not that they can really counsel the patients. Also, I think, I think the medical system, for most part, you know, maybe you have an hour for a patient the most, is not set up to really deal with a whole lifestyle in-depth approach. And so it's more to, okay, no problems, let's move on instead of what 
you know, realizing there's like other, other things, lifestyle areas that when you do address them, I know you do address them, but I think for, I think typically what I hear from all my patients, and I've been doing this quite a long time, over 25 years, is that, and, and not all doctors, I mean, there are functional medicine doctors and there are doctors that, that operate very differently, but I'm saying the conventional doctor means well, and they do test your bone density and they'll, and if it's over a certain number on the bone density, they will, they will mostly usually recommend a medication. And the problem with that is that there could be root causes of osteoporosis that are overlooked. And I see this, and we'll talk about this in a minute about like, for example, gluten. But the point is, if you're not addressing the root causes to just put someone on the medication, and then the person thinks, okay, I'm set. I have my medication. Just like you said, they want a fast cure. That's it. And the doctor may say, you know, make sure you take calcium. They do check vitamin D levels, vitamin D, and exercise and not give you exactly what type of exercise to be done. So that's typically what I see. Well-meaning good doctors. I'm not taking anything away. They just, they just haven't had the in-depth knowledge to know that there's so much more, unless it's a convention, unless it's a more integrative doctor who's worked with functional medicine or you're married to me. <laughs> I'm just teasing. But anyway, yeah. So I think that that is the problem. And the good news, I think the question you asked me, so what do people do? Is that the question you would ask? Yeah. So it, I mean, in terms of an opportunity, you know, you're feeling okay and then you get this diagnosis. So people then stop and now I have them do that. And just look, we look at your life and see all the different areas, you know, first of all, could there be some underlying root causes? You know, there are people who have eczema their whole life or, and they just, you know, treat it with some type of skin cream to, and, but yet there's some autoimmune condition underlying that. Right. There are people, there are people who have, um, let's see. So there are people with autoimmune issues that could be causing it. There's people, all sorts of digestive issues, all sorts of them. And, you know, that's blocking your absorption of nutrients, which is so important, but yet they may be treated with, you know, I don't know, some sort of, some sort of, um, proton pump inhibitor or some sort, you know, they, they treat it with something where they think, okay, I have a bowel movement every two days, no big deal. They don't treat that and they just live with it because they can. So there's so many different things that people are doing that now when they look in and see, maybe this could be a problem where they have mold in their house they didn't know about and they're having reactions. And so anyway, you get to look at the root causes, number one, and then, you know, other things get better. That's what's why I say it's a blessing. You know, you, oh, you're excellent. For example, let's take gluten. Let's take one that's near and dear to our hearts because Craig wouldn't be alive, <laughs> quite honestly, had we not figured this gluten out. And I think other people, you've probably heard the episode that we did together on his gluten situation. But with osteoporosis, I see, I mean, I honestly think, I think when I get people tested, I would say 90%, I really mean this, of people who have osteoporosis end up having some type of sensitivity. This is just my statistic to gluten. But when they take gluten out of their diet, not only doesn't happen instantly because bones don't grow, you know, bones don't improve instantaneously. It takes time. But, and I also do so many other things with people. So I can't say that's the only thing, but there have been people who came to me and the only thing they did was take gluten out. And what did they find? Their bone density got better. And their arthritis went away. They stopped having, not that they didn't have any pain anymore. Their joint pain went away. So that's what I'm saying. When you work on the root causes, things get so much better. Plus you start learning what exercises, maybe you've been an exerciser doing some or a little bit or walking twice a week, whatever, or walking. But then when you learn exactly the exercises you should be doing, they're different. And strength training is a very big component. And talk about, getting older and being empowered, there's just nothing better when you incorporate strength training and balance training. You're not going to fall. So it goes on and on. But the stress reduction, I also include happiness, but really changes how a person sees life. Two, their nutrition gets better. They figure out their root causes and they become exercising more appropriately for their bones, but that's also better for their whole body. So that's it in a nutshell. <laughs> you know, that's really good information. And I can tell you that at this very moment, as I, as I recall, as this episode is being aired, 
you probably should be listening to something else, not to <laughs> us. And Margie can tell you what that might be. Oh, well, I already talked about that in the very beginning before we started. But if, if, if you're listening to this in real time, the, the, it's my second summit on the topic, but all new talks, the more natural approaches to osteoporosis and bone health is happening right now. So what I, what I told you to do in the beginning is to um, stop listening to us because you can come back to us, <laughs> but go over to the summit and that will be underneath and make sure to listen because all these areas are addressed and there's just so much information. If Even if you came last year, there's, I made sure to answer people's questions from last year. People asked about oxalate. They asked about, well, when should they go on medication? Because it's not, I'm not saying it, everybody shouldn't. There, there is a time and a place for it. And I think it's really, you know, I asked numerous doctors about that. And there's just a lot of new information. There's a Qigong demonstration, cooking demonstration. So really practical ways to learn how to incorporate some of these lifestyle you know, lifestyle hacks, things that you can do into your life. I agree. First of all, I'm supposed to agree when I listen to my wife. First of all, you all should listen to her as well. But I, I've found in my private practice, of, you know, been doing this for a long time, that the information that I've learned from Margie is really relevant to my patients. And it's not just the times when they found they have bone issues. And I'm talking about toxins and your air and your environment and your gluten and your eating and your dairy, they take that home. And I'm coming back a year or two later and some people are, are either, they're saying, thank you so much. And I said, for what? They said, well, my husband had eczema and I had him stop eating dairy and he got better or his stomach got better. Um, they lost weight. It's really a remarkable. Sometimes the things that we learn that we don't seem to think are really earth shaking are really quite dramatic for an individual because suddenly they've stopped and reevaluated their life, how they live, how they exercise, and they're better for it. And they're actually grateful, which makes me pretty happy. It makes me feel really good. It's, of course, I was better next to this one anyway. All right, I'll give her back the mic to comment. So. Yes, this is so true. And I think what's so interesting, and I really wish I'd been asking you to do this, to keep a notebook, because once he had the problem with gluten, he started, he couldn't figure out what to do with his patients. Why don't I try getting off gluten and dairy and seeing what happens? And I mean, the stories you told me about ADHD getting better, you know, their kids getting better. It's, it's just quite incredible. So that's what I'm saying. When you do some of these steps that are going to help your bones, your heart, it, you know, the bones aren't in isolation. And so everything gets better, which is just so, it, it's just so exciting. And it makes, I think it's motivating for people too. It's not, it's not as though, oh, I have to do this. I got this diagnosis. It's like, wow. And, and I believe in doing things gradually. You don't, it's not a sudden thing that all of a sudden, oh my gosh, I'm going to fall and have a fracture. I have to do this suddenly. Oh, there's no rush. You can just, one step at a time. That's what's sustainable. And that's what I found over all these years of working with people that when you do one thing, okay, I got this. You know, maybe removing some of the inflammatory foods such as sugar. Okay, let's start and adding maybe some green. Let's start with that. You got that. You go to the next piece. You go to, and, and all of a sudden you look back and your lifestyle is so healthy. And and you feel great. You know, you have so much energy. Your friends are passing out at certain times and you're like, <laughs> you're raring to go. And how good is that? Or I know in some of the classes that I help out with, you know, I have 80 year olds helping me move chairs because they've been exercising, they've been doing things. So I think for everybody out there, whether you have a diagnosis or not, it's just, just Look at it as a gift in a way or, or an opportunity to reevaluate your life and just start taking action, whatever fits in, whatever feels comfortable, not overwhelmed. And I, pro I really do promise that you'll look back and see good things happened because of this. And so, or even, even improving your balance, you know, even working on the balance exercises and then, you know, all of a sudden you're, there's a rock or something and you trip, but you got it. You didn't fall because you you knew how to catch yourself because you've been practicing. So there's just so many I can go on and on. The benefits are endless. But is there anything else you want to say? I do want you to know that 
if you ever get the diagnosis of osteoporosis or even significant osteopenia, it's not a new thing. This has been going on for a while. And you should treat it as this information and not to be reactionary about it. You just got to take concrete steps to move forward. You don't have to be treated instantly. You don't have to revolutionize your existence and your life and your activities. Take a big breath and go listen to Margie. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, the good news is there's so much that can be done. So first, number one, if this is, if it's, the summit starts on March 27th, goes, it's for a week, and then they will... Yeah, so, so start with that, but you can always watch it afterwards as well. But if it's right now, take your time and go and just do as many talks as you can or whatever works in your schedule and look through it. It's like a smorgasbord. I, I, people say, well, why did you put so many talks in? Because they'd rather have a few that they can do. But each person has something different they want to get from it. You know, if there's a person that has really high blood sugar, blood sugar is an issue then you want to hear Dr. Mall. You know, there's so each person has something that they need to. So I, I didn't want to, I wanted to have everybody. That was, that was my thought. And people don't have to listen to everything, but, but there's, so yeah. So anyway, so I worked really hard on this and I really tried to answer questions from the last summit. So it's not as though if you had the last summit, it's the same. It's not the same at all. And we delve into things. We delve into things deeper. I answered the questions that I got from last summit. I mean, even on the low intensity vibration, when I interviewed Dr. Clint Rubin, all about what's safe, you know, because a lot of people are on all sorts of devices that aren't safe. And so he explains why, but he also goes into the new research. That's so exciting. And so, you know, we, we go on what, what's happened even, even since last January. So lots of information. Please join me. Also, every morning, every day, I do a happiness habit. Very short but something that you can put into your day. So at the end of the seven days, you really will be happy. <laughs> this is true. And so anyway, join the, come, come to the summit. If it's after the time, you can always watch the summit, but also I have all sorts of other programs that you can have access to, to also give you the information and give you the tools so you can start on your journey to better bones and better health and better happiness. So thank you. Anything else, Craig, before we end? I have to go exercise now. <laughs> we're actually doing this very early in the morning and we're both going to work. So <laughs> anyway, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Craig, for coming on with me. And and um, hope, I hope everybody joins me at the summit. Thank you for listening. I hope this motivated you to take a new approach to how you're looking at your bone health, wherever you are in your journey. Look at it as an opportunity to make positive change and just start on something now. And as I said, the summit's available right now. So I highly recommend it because there's so much information from just fabulous experts. There's 54 new talks. So even if you came last year, there's so much new information and demonstrations and just a lot of practical tips that you can put into your life and areas that maybe you didn't think about that can be contributing to your bone health with things that you can get started on right away. So if the summit's still available, turn on right now and start watching that. Otherwise, I have other programs that I'll put in the show notes to also help you because there's so much that can be done. And I really strongly believe you'll look back and you will believe that it was a blessing in disguise that you had this diagnosis or that you were motivated to start doing things about your bones. So thank you so much for tuning in and I look forward to seeing you on the next episode.